Hi guys! Welcome back to this channel. I'm Teacher Sam, your online learning buddy. Is there a significant relationship between teaching strategies and students' performance? What's your prediction? What's your guess? Now that you have your research questions, let's talk about a piece of chapter 1 that is very short and only takes up about a quarter of a page in your manuscript but is a very significant component of your research paper. The hypothesis of this study. In this unit, you will learn what a hypothesis is, the features of a well-stated hypothesis, the types of hypothesis, and how to develop your study's hypothesis or hypotheses. A hypothesis is singular and it means only one, while hypotheses are plural and they mean more than one. So what is a hypothesis? A research hypothesis is a prediction or statement of expectation that will be tested through study. It is a tentative statement of the link between two or more variables. A hypothesis is a particular, testable prediction about what will happen in your research. When you write the hypothesis, you're guessing the link between variables and converting the study question into a prediction of expected results. In other words, a hypothesis is a prediction of the answer to your research question or an educated guess about the link between your study's components. It's crucial to remember that your research hypothesis must be linked to your research topic and study variables. Let's have a look at the qualities of a well-stated hypothesis now. First, it denotes a tentative relationship between two or more variables. It is a verbal statement statement in a declarative form. It's never asked in the form of a question. It is generated from the statement of the problem. This means that your theory must be in line with the study topic. Whether it is correct or incorrect, it should be empirically testable. It must be exact and specific. It should be stated as simply as possible so that all parties involved may understand it. Now, this is a crucial point that needs to be clarified. Do all research investigations have to have a hypothesis? If not, what type of research requires the formulation of a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a term that is frequently used in experimental research, particularly experimental quantitative research. A hypothesis must be developed prior to doing the experimental quantitative research study with the two variables IV and DV. So you'll know whether your intelligent guess or prediction regarding these factors was true or not once the study is completed or after you have executed the intervention. If the experiment's results matches the hypothesis, the hypothesis can be accepted. However, if the experiment's outcome contradicts the hypothesis, it is rejected. Let's look at how to write the study's hypothesis now. To begin, determine the type of hypothesis you will formulate in your research project. Simple hypothesis. It is a hypothesis formulated when predicting a relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. For example, quality of work life is related to teachers' productivity. Complex hypothesis is the one in which there are multiple dependent as well as independent variables. For example, online games have no relationship with the study habits and performance of students in English. Here we have one independent variable which is online games and two dependent variables, study habits and performance. The study hours and online tools preferences have no relationship with the pupil's performance in mathematics. In this example, we have two independent variables, study hours and online tools preference, and one dependent variable which is pupil's performance. Directional hypothesis. It is a hypothesis that describes not only the existence of a link between the independent and dependent variables, but also the expected direction of that relationship. A directional hypothesis expresses which way you believe the findings will go. For example, in an experimental study, you might say participants who have been deprived of sleep for 24 hours will have more cold symptoms in the following week after exposure to a virus than participants who have not been sleep deprived. The hypothesis compares the two groups or conditions and states which one will have more or less, be quicker or slower, etc. 
the directional hypothesis in a correlational study would state whether a positive or negative correlation is expected and how the two variables will be related to one another. For example, there is a link between the number of stressful life events you have had in the last year and the number of coughs and colds you have had, whereby the more stressful life events you have had, the more coughs and colds you will have. A negative correlation can also be stated in the directional hypothesis. For example, the more Facebook friends you have, the lower your life satisfaction score. Non-directional hypothesis. This is a hypothesis in which the direction of the relationship between the independent and dependent variables is not specified. A non-directional hypothesis merely indicates that there will be a difference between the two groups or conditions but does not specify whether the difference will be greater or smaller, faster or slower, or otherwise. Using our previous example, there will be a difference in the number of cold symptoms reported in the following week after exposure to a virus for participants who have been sleep deprived for 24 hours versus those who have not. When the study is correlational, we just say that variables will be associated but not whether the connection will be positive or negative. For example, there will be a significant correlation between variable A and variable B. Null hypothesis. A null hypothesis is is a statistical hypothesis that states that there is no significant difference between the variables in question. It is always said in a negative manner and 8-0 is a common symbol for it. For example, there is no significant relationship between texting and students' writing performance. Alternative hypothesis. It is a statistical hypothesis that claims that there is a significant difference between the sets of variables in hypothesis testing. It is is typically abbreviated as H1. For example, there is a significant relationship between texting and students' writing performance. Let us take this research question and state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Is there a significant relationship between texting and students' writing performance? The null hypothesis is there is no significant relationship between texting and students' writing performance. The alternative hypothesis is there is a significant relationship between texting and students' writing performance. What if you also have another research question? Is there a significant difference in the teacher's morale when grouped according to the profile of the respondents? The null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the teacher's morale when grouped according to the profile of the respondents. The alternative hypothesis is there is a significant difference in the teacher's morale when grouped according to the profile of the respondents. Again, the null hypothesis denotes a claim that no difference or effect is expected. An alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, predicts a difference or effect. So you see, your hypothesis must be aligned with your research question. Before I wrap up this video, it's important to note that the study's assumption is distinct from the study's hypothesis. This will be covered in a later video video. Good luck and I hope you learned something from this video. If you are new in this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for you to be notified for my next uploads. See you in my next video. Happy e-learning!